Thanks, Jenny. So hello, museum families, and welcome to RBCM at Home Kids, a play date through screens across British Columbia and the world. The previous sessions are recorded, and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page, including this one, not right away, but in a couple days, it'll, it'll be up as well. So my name is Chris O'Connor, and I'm a learning program developer here at the Royal BC Museum. My, mu my the, the museum, but my home is on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. I'm an uninvited guest on this territory and grateful to live, learn and raise a family on this land. So living here on Vancouver Island, I am surrounded by water and constantly amazed at how beautiful it is, how surprising it is, how diverse it is, thinking of all the things that live and grow in and around the ocean and also how important it is that the ocean be healthy and clean, how important it is for us to help protect the ocean. So today we're lucky to be joined by an organization that's doing really good work to help people appreciate and protect the ocean and educate uh, kids big and small to feel empowered to make a difference. Sea Smart is based out of Vancouver and we're joined by Paloma Corvalin, the scientist, educator and program manager at Sea Smart. Paloma is passionate about science outreach, sustainability, and creating inclusive communities. So welcome, Paloma. We're so happy that you're here. Yes, thank you for inviting me to be part of this today and for having CSMART be part of this amazing online virtual program uh, that the Royal BC uh, Museum is, uh, is running. And so, so excited for, uh, is it RBCMC at home? Is that what it's called? Oh, R RBCM at home. Kids. Yeah, I yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah. So and once it's so we, nice to see you all today. Thank you. Once uh, we do lots of programs on site, but not over the last year, obviously. So once the pandemic hit, we um, started to do this weekly program. And it's, we're actually almost up to 50 now. This is uh, very wow. close to our 50th um, one. And in a couple of weeks, we'll have our one year anniversary. Well, that's so exciting. And, and it's great that we've had this opportunity to be reaching out uh, beyond just our, our physical space where we, we currently are, but inviting inviting everyone from you know across Canada or across the world to be joining us. So uh, I'd love to, to hear about where, where people are hailing from too, uh, where you're joining us from and, uh, and, and how you found out about this session today. Yeah. And I have a question for you, Paloma, so that, um because there are lots of kids out there and probably lots of kids that are really interested in science and uh, science education. And so as a scientist and as a science educator, how did you, how did you come to that field? What, what, what was your path from, from being the kid when you, were, when you were younger to where you are now? Where did your, where did your passion mm -hmm. come from and how did you get to where you are? Yeah, it was a it was a long journey with lots of little roundabouts. Um, just as a as a child, I think I I had these amazing opportunities to to be connected with nature. I had a forest right by my house, and so I would go and and visit it all the time. Uh, spent a lot of times climbing trees and just sitting there and and you know feeling present in the moment. And I think that that was nurtured a lot by by my family too, who who helped me get to those spaces and, and also learn about the natural environment through, through giving me lots of books and resources to, to engage with that. And so science was always just my passion growing up uh, something or, and connecting with nature. So when I went to university at the University of British Columbia, I studied environmental science and fell in love with uh, doing research and uh, being out in nature, doing field work. So I went on to pursue my PhD, uh, doing a doctorate degree in animal behavior, studying kangaroos in Australia. So that was really exciting, getting to out there in the field, watching kangaroos every day, following them around. Uh, I felt like the, the Jane Goodall of kangaroos. Nice. <laughs> um, but while I was doing my PhD, I did a lot of outreach. Um, teaching what I was learning to others, going out to schools, telling them about research and realize that that's, that's where I just shine and felt so in love with inspiring others, seeing kids getting uh, like things clicking in place for them. And I'm hoping that that's what you'll feel today, things clicking in place for you when we learn about 
uh, ocean trash and pollution. And so that's what I wanted to do. I said, I wanted to go and connect with kids, but really most importantly with environmental science. We have lots of environmental issues that we are all together tackling and we all need to learn about what they are and what we can do to help contribute to their solutions. And that's how I joined C-Smart and become, became their program manager. And that's what we do now. We go out to schools, uh, we, do, we have online courses, we do summer camp programs, all to get kids connected to nature, learning about environmental issues, but really being inspired and empowered to take action in our daily lives to address these. And we'll be putting in the chat in the comments section uh, a link both to the website for C-SMART, but also to the newsletter, uh, C-SMART's newsletter. So really encourage people to, to sign up to be um, part of C-SMART's newsletter to, to hear about all the, the amazing things that you do. So, so today we're going to do an activity. And we were saying that a little bit earlier uh, what people will need. Uh, but just in case people came in a little bit late, um, do, do you want to just say again, Paloma, what people will need in terms of yes, activities. Of course, yeah. So I have it all in front of me here. Uh, we have a sheet of paper. And this is actually something I just, a, wor a new word I learned today. It's called goose paper. That's, or some people call it that. So good on one side. So one side is blank for me to work on. And another side was previously used. So it's, I'm reusing a piece of paper, making sure I'm making the most of the resources that we have before needing to get rid of it. Um, and we're gonna be coloring on it today. So I have some markers in front of me that I'm gonna, going to be using. And we're gonna be using some water. So I've got this bowl of water here that I'm gonna be splashing on my paper right at the end. And because I'm gonna be using some water and paper and I don't wanna get the whole area messy, I've got this handy little baking tray. So again, it's on the side for now, but I'll be putting my paper on that after spraying water on it and just making sure that all the water will pull in here instead. But other than, um, so those are all the things that you need if you wanna follow along. There's a few extra things I have. So instead of just using my fingers, I also have a spray bottle of water. I have these uh, spray bottles at home because I make my own cleaning products. And when I make my own cleaning products, then I know, hey, I'm making something environmentally friendly because I'm just using vinegar and water or Castile soap, and, uh, and then I can clean all of my surfaces. And I know that the cleaning products are not gonna be harmful for my health or for the health of the environment. And then lastly, this is what I really love and lots of fun. Got little things of food coloring here, uh, little bottles of them. And I'll be putting this on at the end to go along with our markers. <laughs> So all just right. um, for everyone to know, if you don't have any of those, if you don't have all of those materials, that's okay. Just watch along with us and you could always go back uh, later and, and do, the, um, do the other parts that you were not able to do with, uh, once, you, once you do get all those materials. Um, someone asks, is it okay to use Sharpies? Yeah, you can use Sharpies. Um, it's just that at the end, when we spray water on it, it, depending on uh, what kind of Sharpies you're using, it might not, uh, you might not get as much of the leaching of the colors, which is what we're gonna see. But this is an initial test, as, as Chris just was just saying, you can follow along today with what you have, and then if you want, you can try it again later with, uh, with different kinds of materials. Love it. Great, and I'm just gonna share my screen really quickly, because Chris mentioned, you know, this is who we are at CSMART. And if you did want to go and check out the newsletter, you can go to csmartschool.com um, and then follow us at csmartschool. And today we're learning about how does trash, how do pollutants, things that are harmful for the environment, how do they get out into our oceans? So we're going to be drawing on this piece of paper today. And for each of them, there's going to be kind of four different sections. So when we're talking about one part, try to keep it within the, just each little section here. And then we're going to be drawing something in the middle. So just letting you know spatially what that's going to look like. So the first thing is this is a map of where we live. And right at this, maybe you can choose one of the corners. I'm going to draw in the bottom right. I'm going to draw where I live. So I live in an apartment building. So I'm going to draw a little apartment over here. I've got 
some little windows. I'm at the window right now, so I'm gonna draw myself over there. And it's got a little door. So you might not be able to see that well, but I've just drawn a little apartment there. So we know this is mm -hmm. where you live we on are. The top, do you live on the top floor of your apartment, Bunny? Oh, you know what? That's funny. I put myself on the top floor, but I don't. I'm only one below him. <laughs> hmm. Maybe that shows Maybe you want some to, in yeah. inner psychology. Yeah, I want to live on the top floor. Well, I that's do the great thing about drawing, right? You could. You can you change find out about before. yourself. Yeah. And then you can also choose and imagine what life could be like in different ways. Um, yeah, I do love having a nice view of places, especially when there's lots of trees around. So that, that's nice on the, on the top floor. You might have them. And I'll just say, like, um, just because sometimes Paloma people, sometimes kids are wondering if they sh should start or not, um, if there's a demonstration. So just to say for everyone out there, uh, feel free to be drawing along uh, with Paloma as, as she goes along. Yeah, and then I drew myself in an apartment, but you can be drawing like your house, um, you can be drawing your neighbors, uh, you know, or whatever sort of setting that, that you live in. This is your little town over here that you can draw on this bottom right corner. So I'll draw, I know that there's some houses around me, so I'll also draw a few little houses. And there's my my neighbor Julianne in the house over here and her son Oliver. There we go. They're over there. So we have our little town on this side over here. We're here to talk about trash and about pollutants. So what are the kind of things that we know have we seen as a pollutant, as a piece of trash, something harmful for the environment in our little town? When you've gone walking around, have you ever seen a piece of litter on the ground? I certainly have. Yeah, so some of you have. We'll start drawing those little pieces of litter. Maybe grab another color and think about what it is that you saw on the ground that was some, something that someone accidentally threw away or, or maybe not accidentally, they did it on purpose, just threw it on the ground. Yeah, have you seen someone throw a cigarette butt on the ground? Ooh, I'm gonna draw a cigarette butt over here. Did you know that they're made of plastic? So that's them littering plastic whenever a little cigarette butt is on the ground there. Ooh, candy wrappers, that's another great one. So I'm gonna draw a little candy wrapper over here, a little gummy wrapper that someone opened up, finished, and then they, they didn't have a trash can, so they put it down next to them. But then the wind took it away and they completely forgot about it. So little candy wrappers, and, um, and a little gummy wrapper over here that I drew on the side. And you can see I'm drawing things really fast. That's not really my area of expertise to draw, but you can put as much effort or as much detail as you want in yours. So does everyone wanna show me what do you have in your drawing so far? What are some of the pieces of trash? Ooh, a plastic bag. Oh, that's a good one. I'm gonna draw a plastic bag too. Yeah, I've seen one of those or a mask, you're right. One of the masks, those disposable masks that people just accidentally drop. I've been seeing a lot of those recently. A little plastic bag over here. Yeah, lots of you saying masks. Oh, uh, beer cans, yeah, or, or water bottles. That's another good example there. So whatever it is that you have and lots of other random garbage. Yeah, straws, good, good example. So all those little pieces of litter, they're in our town. That's our neighborhood. This is where we live. And there's all this garbage around us. So one thing we can do is we can try to pick these up safely um, as of when we do a little neighborhood cleanup to make sure that we're not putting all these pollutants in our environment. And then next door to us, so we're done with this first, our town over here, we have our neighboring town that we're gonna have. And this neighboring town, so you can draw a few small little houses here. There's a little, some houses. This is where my friend lives. She lives in the neighboring town. And sometimes I go see her, try to bike over um, and give her a wave when I come by on my way to work. But what this other town has that my town doesn't have is a gas station. So I'm gonna draw a gas station over here. So what I'll do is I'll just first draw a banner and write the word gas. So you can see over there, gas, G-A-S, or you can write gas station. 
or you can write the name of the gas station um, that you've seen before. And it's just a little structure that's open. And what do they have at the gas stations? What do you go there for when you go to fill up, uh, you know, cars go to fill up their, their petrol in the car? Yeah, so they have those little gas pumps. And then people go, they put, um, they, they fill up their car with oil, with the, the, the gas. And then as they take it out, maybe a little bit of that, a few little droplets go on the ground. But a few little droplets from every single person goes on the ground. So at the end of the day, what we have is we might have just a little bit of a puddle forming within the gas station of this crude petroleum oil that's um, of, of, of what we, what we've, all those little droplets accumulating into a little puddle over there. And that's now going to become a pollutant. So something that is not good for to be out in our environment and it's just pulled up over there. And if no one goes to clean that up, well, that's also going to go when it rains, that's gonna come down and end up in our waterways. Hmm. Because what's next to near a gas station is this little storm drain. So we have a little grate on the side of the, of the road. And when it rains, that water goes down this little grate over here and then ends up in our river. So just knowing that that's how some pollutants, some harmful chemicals can be going down into our waterways there. The other thing that this town has is an overflowing trash can. So they have this really busy park, which is awesome. Lots of people love going there, but they only put one trash can, whereas lots and lots of people come by every single day and they have a lot of, they bring a picnic full of stuff and they throw all their things away. Maybe there's a parade. Um, oh, and what about the sun? Yeah, you can draw the sun on the, in the top corner if you'd like for your, your area. This is your drawing, so you can go and you can put it as you please. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. An overflowing trash can. So maybe there was a parade, there was a big event, and here they even had two trash cans that they put here, and I'm sure that there were more within the park. But unfortunately, because it was so full, there's all this trash that goes on the side over there. So that's what I want you to draw. I want you to draw an overflowing trash can in this second town over here. I've got trash can. And what are the, some of the items that are overflowing around in? Yeah, we see like a little cup over there. Nice. Ooh, lots of those water bottles. So instead of people bringing their own water bottles, they decided to get these plastic ones and then they needed to throw it away. Yeah. And then, so that's now all on the side. Lots of little, yeah, plastic bags again. Lots of little plastic wrappers, some cans, some paper, got these random flags. And so whatever it is that you wanna put, I put a little drink cup over here. I put my trash cans over here, a little drink cup on the side, some bottles and a little bag. And then you might have lots of just, you can also just draw little miscellaneous little tidbits of tiny little pieces of, of plastic that, that people might have just been disposing of. Yeah, someone put a chip bag, nice. Yeah, lots of chip bags that, that people go, especially when they're having a picnic and then they need somewhere to throw that away. But because it's not in the trash can, what's the issue? Yeah, so hopefully someone will come and, and pick that up and be able to clean it up. But if they don't come on time, maybe the wind is gonna take away all these little pieces of plastic. Maybe it's gonna rain and that water is gonna carry this away. And then it becomes a pollutant. It's out in the environment. No one's taking it away. It can end up going into a creek or river and end up flowing down into the ocean. So anytime that we have seen, and have you seen that before, a trash can that's overflowing? Even one that's not full, I've seen a whole bunch of trash around it. Yeah, you too? Yeah, so that's the way that, that trash gets into our ocean. That's how litter um, gets into our oceans. It's from all of these little bits over here, at least when we think about where we are in our town and neighboring towns. 
but there's not just plastic um, that is a form of pollution. There's other things too. So in this top left corner, um, what I want us to draw is a farm. So all of these people living here, they need to eat food. So it's really important to have a place where we're growing food. We can have, we can grow some food in our own homes, which is great. We can supply ourselves with some herbs and some fresh fruit and veggies, but we do also need to supplement ourselves with maybe some, some farms that are on the outskirts. So what I'm gonna draw is soil. So you can take a brown pen, an orange pen, a red pen, whatever suits you best for drawing some soil. And I'm gonna draw little squiggly lines over here, just showing you what that looks like. Just little squiggly lines to show soil in a farmland over here. And they've planted all of their seeds and they wanna make sure that their seeds grow really well. So what do they do? They add something called fertilizer fertilizer to help the plants grow. So it's great. It gives the plants nutrients that they're able to grow with. But the farmers don't really know, well, how much should I use? I really want my plants to go super well. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch on and I'm going to take another color and I'm going to draw ooh, lots and lots of fertilizer that gets added, added to the soil. The fertilizer is also within the soil but it more gets added on. So that's me adding all this extra fertilizer over there. But the problem is that because it's just been added on top and then it rains the next day, that rain then says, well, hey, this fertilizer's over here. Uh, it's not really embedded in the soil. It's really easy to sweep up and then take down and bring that to the creek. And so there's a little creek nearby when it rains, all this fertilizer is gonna get picked up and brought into the waterways. And fertilizer in our soil, that's great. Fertilizer in our waters, too much of it, that is not good. It is a form of pollution. Too much fertilizer in the water will actually cause something called algal blooms. So too much algae grows and then that, messes up the ecosystem, takes away the oxygen from the water, and fish are not able to live there anymore. So another form of pollution over there, too much fertilizer in our lands. But there's something else, and we're going to use this little corner over here to draw an area that already has plants. So it's a farm that has lots and lots of plants that have been growing, and they want to protect these plants. They say, you know what, people only want to buy plants that are going to look beautiful and perfect and they don't want any little holes in them. And you know what makes holes in these um, plants? Well, insects. Insects come and eat my plants and I don't want them to eat them. So I'm going to spray these plants. I've got these plants over here and I'm going to spray them. Does anyone know what they spray them with? What's the name? of the thing that they spray them with to kill insects, to kill insects that might go and munch them. Ooh, it's called pesticides, yeah. So pests, we consider insects that eat our plants, we consider them pests, we say we don't like them. And we have pesticides to get rid of them. So some pesticides, um, are not harmful for the environment, but those are not as effective. So a lot of people choose to use toxic pesticides, pesticides that are really gonna just not allow any insects to be there whatsoever. And those, I'm gonna draw them in purple so they get all sprayed with pesticides. And then insects, they don't come there. The people growing the plants, they're happy. No insects eating my plants. I can sell all these crops. People expect beautiful vegetables and I'm gonna give them beautiful vegetables. Any ones that are not beautiful, I'm gonna throw away. And the problem is there though, is that these pesticides that kill insects in, the, in this land, well, what happens when it rains? That doesn't just stay here. Again, it goes to our creeks and our rivers and it doesn't just kill insects that are on the plants. It's going to harm insects that are living in the creeks. The creeks are a whole ecosystem. There's animals living there. 
animals that are the insects are the you know the one of the and um animals at the bottom of the food chain our fish like our salmon they eat insects as they're growing and we don't want them to be getting those pesticides in their bodies because if it's not good for insects it's not good for fish and it's not going to be good for animals that eat those fish so again a pollutant a harmful substance that can get into our waterways and not so great for any of us other than for making these beautiful plants. Um, but there's other ways that farmers are saying, well, maybe we don't need beautiful plants because we can make delicious plants. Sometimes they have a little bruise on them. Sometimes they have a little hole in them and that's okay. They're still yummy and still very nutritious. Plus they don't have the pesticides that are gonna maybe go into our bodies too. All right, so we have all of this set up right now. And what we're Paloma, going to... Paloma, I'm just going to jump in just for a second. We have about five minutes left. Um, and just as a reminder for everyone out there, um, so it's this is a this is a town, and however you did that on your page uh, is great. It's it's just showing the town with all the different kinds of things that are in a town. Some things that are great, and some things that are that might be uh, adding to pollution in a town. So. Um, so whatever you did on your page uh, is exactly what you should have been doing. So, um, yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So now what's going to happen? Thanks, everyone. So I'll just quickly share my screen again. So we had that overflowing bin. We had this fertilizer that got added, and um, another thing that can happen too is we have these cars around. So this little cloud over here is another type of pollution that we could have in uh, going onto our ground too, especially when it rains. Um, oops, sorry, am I still sharing? No, good. <laughs> um, so what we have then is, what we're gonna do next is we're going to be um, scrunching up this piece of paper. So what we wanna do is kind of create a little bit more of a bowl with it. So I've got this and I'm gonna be scrunching it up without ripping it and then opening it back up again. Because when we have a town, we have this as, a, as our map of an area, it's not just all flat. You know, there are some hills, there are mountains, um, and there's valleys, and that's what we wanna show here. So maybe our little town area is up here, and then all of these farmlands are, are again up there. And then I'm, I'm just gonna make this into more of a bowl so that our water, as we put it on, can pool in the middle. All right, so we have that over here and I'm gonna go and I'm going to get my tray and put that on there. And if you're having trouble, just kind of make it into a bowl just so that the sides are open and I, I put a little bit of texture inside, but really just any bowl like that. Try not to rip it, but if you do, no worries, that's okay. Um, and then so we have our, our paper right now, our map of our town. That's my home over here, your home. Uh, we've got our neighboring town. Remember, we have the little oil spill over here, that overflowing trash can, all this litter, the fertilizer from over here, and the pesticides, all of those are examples of pollutants. And now, I'm gonna take my little dropper and if you have any paint or if you wanted to really add more marker where you drew that pollution, I'm gonna be just adding that here. So for our litter, I'm gonna show in blue, I had some litter on this side. And then in red, I'm gonna show that there was an oil spill over here. In yellow, I'm going to say, ooh, look at all that pesticides that I put on this side. And in green, we've got some fertilizer that I've added to my land. So I've got just those little droplets over there and that's just to help when I um, add my water to show how the colors, all of those pollutants flow down. So everyone go and grab your uh, bowl of water now, if you have that. Or if you did have a spray bottle, then you can grab that too. And Oh, make sure that this is staying out like a bowl. And then grabbing it and spraying it on. Nice. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to add 
And as I spray, I'd like to show you a little bit more of what's happening. So as I'm spraying, can you see how those colors are starting to leach down? They're flowing down. So what this water represents, it's the rain. Rain coming down and that's what happens is it's the rain that's carrying all of the pollutants, all of the litter that we have, the fertilizer, the pesticides. And where does that rain flow down to? Where does rain go? Well, it pools down, it forms creeks and rivers and then pools down in the bottom over here. And at the bottom, what we have is we have maybe a lake, um, maybe a little pond. And you can see how in those ponds and rivers and lakes, all of the pollutants we have, that's where they start to mix. And then at the end, they all are gonna flow down to the ocean. So I realized that we did run out a little bit of time today. <laughs> And we didn't get to spend a lot of time right at the end on, on all of this, but this is just to understand how, like what are the different kinds of pollutants that we have near us in our, in our homes, in our neighboring villages our, and towns and cities, and in the areas that are supplying our cities, our farmlands and um, our industries, where we're buying our clothes, the cars, the vehicles that we're using that are transporting goods to us and how all of these are connected to the ocean from the rain, bringing things down to the creeks, flowing down to rivers and flowing out to the ocean. So no matter where we are in the world, we are connected to the ocean and what we do influences the ocean and the ocean in turn influences us. And so we wanna make sure we have that really nice positive a relationship with the ocean where we are working towards ensuring that we're not gonna be adding more pollutants to them, more harmful chemicals. And we can make those choices every day by what we choose to use and um, how we choose to live our lives and then decisions that we can help influence on a big level too. All right, so I know we have to end our session today, but it was so great to connect with you all. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Paloma. And, and thank you so much early on to say um, how you make your own cleaner too. So those are some choices in terms of making sure that what you, what we're putting into the environment is, is healthy. Um, also just thinking about you early on when you were saying just walking around your neighborhood and if you see trash to pick it up that like we can be all be part of the solution to make a healthier place where we're living, which will then also make a healthier uh, ocean and waterways, so. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to just uh, end with here before we, we head off, and I realize this is not in full presenter mode right now, but if you are interested in actually taking action, learning about marine mammals, uh, marine animals, and, and learning how you can help protect them, we have these uh, courses called Ocean Defender um, that you can check out on our, on our website where you learn about animals like sea stars and sea turtles, orcas and octopuses. And we also do these kinds of sessions where we actually come out to schools. It's all being done virtually right now. So if you're interested, if you're a teacher, you wanna bring us in for, for a one hour workshop with your class, um, please go and visit our virtual sea school section on our website to come and invite us in. And of course we do charge for some of these programs, but um, we do also, we're a charity. We wanna help uh, bring this knowledge out to others. So if cost is ever a barrier, uh, we always wanna do free programs whenever we can. So please let us know and uh, we're happy to help provide that. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Paloma. And we put, uh, Jenny put in the, the chat, the link to uh, C Smart's website and and the newsletter as well. So, and thank you so much for guiding us through that and getting us thinking about um, our neighborhoods and healthy oceans and for all the work that you do with with C Smart and um, and uh, and working with kids to for us all to be part of the solution. So, thank you, Paloma. Wonderful. Thank you for having me today, Chris. Have a good day, everyone. Nice yeah, to see thanks, you all. Everyone.